<laughs> we're live now on Twitch. Welcome everybody to our Roll for Wishes campaign. I am DM Windy J, and we have some fundraising we're trying to do. So thank you guys for joining us for doing so. Um, here's kind of what's going on in the world of uh, the the guild right now. So the step the first one, of course, we're playing a roll for Roll for Wishes, and so this is a campaign of uh where, where we're raising money for make a wish international uh there's your lovely little campaign thingy there and so with this um it's also my birthday week as a fat matter of fact it's actually the birthday today so happy um, birthday thank you i am now uh, my, i am now the age that is the answer to life the universe and everything and so you don't get that reference Ooh. Okay. Anyway, um, the yeah. So it's you know good, good days, good days. Uh, but we're gonna raise some funds. So we've been targeting a two hundred fifty dollar goal um, as soon as we possibly can. Uh, there is a uh, a giveaway that happens at one hundred dollars though, uh, and the giveaway is this thing right here. It is a mouse pad uh, for for the Olivon Chronicles, uh, which is our Friday games. Uh, of which uh, caffeine is a member of one of the, of that as well. Uh, so this is uh, that is the giveaway that'll happen at 100 bucks. Once we hit 100, then then we have to draw names from the people who have donated as well as the people who are online when it happens. And so yeah, watch out for that kind of stuff. But we're also doing some other things um, for this entire week. Every time somebody doesn't matter who it is anybody rolls and uses a natural one or a natural 20 windy j throws an extra five bucks at that roll for wishes campaign so you can see the cauldron right nope there right there i always get that mixed up you see a cauldron on the uh, to, uh, to the left of my lovely little window right now uh that's got 35 bucks in it because um caffeine kept rolling that ones last game uh and a lot of them like seven of them so which is why it's 35 bucks full um so yeah that's that's a thing that's going to happen uh, today too if we get some rolls out if it's a nat one i throw five bucks at it if it's a nat 20 i throw five bucks at it and that's going to be another way that we can get some money for these wishes to happen um other uh, quick uh, guild stuff we have our friday game which is again tomorrow same time as this right now and that is the olivon chronicles where the party meets a dragon uh, the adventures of ala inn happen at uh, 7 30 utc and that is uh, apparently necromancy for dummies is that particular title uh then we get to tuesday again and that is our Witchlight campaign they managed to survive a shade swarm of some sort um now they have no idea what they're going to do next and then zelda is back wednesday next week as well at 6 p.m central uh and that is i, I actually don't know where they're at with it with the zelda campaign so i'm gonna have to ask peeps about that um and then We'll be back here for the second session of the Roll for Wishes campaign. Uh, and this is a really short, tidy campaign. Um, there, You guys could burn through it really, really, really fast. Or you, you could really go methodically through it. It's entirely up to you. Either way, it is a short adventure, so it probably won't take much more than three sessions to go through it all. Um, and then we can dive into... Well, then it's Christmas season, so then we'll talk about what we're going to do after that. So um there we go that is the lay of the land and so hey thanks there sky good to see you in the chat um thank you for joining we will be let's let's why don't we say we get underway on this one then shall we this is the roll for wishes campaign so this is a module that was actually made by make a wish and an international and their supporters uh so kudos out to them you can see the realm of nocturne behind me in my screen this is the realm of nocturne as the overall realm map as it were for the campaign that we're going to be in today so um yeah they just they had some fun putting the stuff together uh so where last week we did session zero we created our characters and so you can see three of our characters here right now just like so uh we have with us uh juniper we have uh Peleus, and we have vio so I am going to request, just because it's new campaign, just barely starting, why don't we start with uh, Juniper. What would people see when they see Juniper? So, Juniper is um, on, I want to say the taller side, because I'm like 5'3". 
<laughs> but like five six, five seven. Um, she has blonde hair, um, kind of put together in a long braid. And being a druid, she's not super sociable and not very good at it. <laughs> um, so she kind of has um, a uh, unpleasant demeanor. And um, the thing that people will probably notice first is that she's wearing um, a hooded cape that's like um, a blood red color. Gotcha. Okay. That brings us now to Peleus. What do people see when they see Peleus? <clears throat> Two things come to mind. Frail and pale. He's, um, <laughs> he's not very... <laughs> He's not very ma masculine, shall we say, look. <laughs> He's a bit weedy. He weedy. Oh, I like that word description. Weedy. He's got long black hair and clean shaven. But he wears his hair in uh, it's, it's bundled up into a hair net, a silver hair net in, in, the, in the shape of a spider's web. Or spider nice. design, web design. And wears black robe with silver trim. And uh, on his... His shield is the device of a sable tower on a white field, a silver Ooh. field. And he wields a huge black war hammer with silver filigree in a spider web's pattern. And wears a silver holy symbol with the shape of a spider. That's cool. Uh, then we move on to Vio then next. Uh. <laughs> Okay, um, Vio is a young, 22-year-old female. She is 5 foot 7 tall. She has black hair and she has tan skin. Um, she also wields a double-bladed scimitar that she really loves to use. <laughs> and she wears a red dress. Not a natural red dress of cloth, but something very biological red. Oh, look at that. Nice timing on the end of the description of Vio. Sky Guy is throwing at Dutch us. Dungeons gifted a tier one sub to Larcher. So, oh, there's this. Oh, this is going to take a couple guys. I apologize. And also, I don't <laughs> apologize at the same time. Sky Guy has gifted some uh, some subscriptions to Dutch people. Dutch Dungeons gifted a tier one sub to Glitter Murder. And I love these names, and I love how these come out too. So, uh, like Glitter Murder, Larcha. Um, this one's gonna be Ender Commanding. It's coming. Dutch it's coming. Dungeons gifted a tier one sub to Ender Commanding. <laughs> it just keeps coming. And there's hey Dak, you got a subscription. Hey, look at that. <laughs> What's that about? He did five! <coughs> there's, there's one more! There's Dutch one. Dungeons gifted a tier one sub to Absalom Dark. And there it is! And Rookind! <laughs> awesome. This is, I'm just letting him go. I'm letting him go. Sky, you're awesome, in case you didn't know. Dutch Dungeons gifted a tier one sub to Rookinde. That's awesome. Uh, I Actually, no, I think Rookinde is actually somebody else. Uh, I think Rookind is, uh, I, I, yeah, no, Rook has got a different, uh, it, um, different name on Twitch, so that's kind of cool. Um, we're pretty excited. Thank you very much, Sky, for all of those donations of subs. Um, and I definitely appreciate it. Uh, it is, uh, and, and he's also already given to the Wish campaign, which is kind of cool, too, so, um, thanks for all that, Sky. I, you know, you know I love you. You know I love you. Uh, okay, so. Then let's carry on to the session proper, shall we? We go into uh, where you guys were kind of introduced to was this um, uh, th this uh, farming community on the outskirts of a magical forest. You don't know necessarily much about this magical forest. Uh, as a matter of fact, you probably come from a different place in the realm. You have actually been... Uh, made your way here by way uh, because there was a, a call put out or a rumor I should say of somebody needing some adventures to help uh, help out um, at, at this animal sanctuary of some sort and so getting to this animal sanctuary uh, well get first of all getting to Sherdale what you see is just this little itty bitty town that seems to have 
Um, lots of farms surrounding it, and there is a mill in town. There is uh, some basic small shops, like a general goods store kind of idea. Um, it's There's not much to this town except for the feature location in it, which is the... Um, which is the animal sanctuary and it is right on the back end of town kind of uh, bordering um, a cliff drop over top of the ocean outside as well as the forest on the uh, it, towards the back end of town as well and so there is it is fenced and so and gated after a fashion gated so you go to the toll uh, to the to the ticket booth as it were to seek entrance and are um, immediately clocked as you guys look inside to see the variety of different creatures uh, the first creatures you see are relatively mundane is the best word to describe them sheep um, horses dogs uh, there's a couple the most unique one out the gate there or right right at the entrance to the gate there is a lion uh, not but it seems to be somewhat tame uh, and female a female lion to be clear not not one of the large no large mane just um, and it, it's almost as if the there are uh, this lion is actually already kind of used to the little ones um, cuddling into her like cubs. And you do see there is families in and out of this um, uh, this animal sanctuary uh, experiencing all of the different a- animal life. But the one creature that, you know, one person that you see um, clock, your, uh, clock you guys as you approach the ticket booth is this halfling that's got shorn hair. On one side, slightly longer, uh, slightly longer hair on the that kind of folds over the side of her head, uh, tied back into a bun, a uh, couple of earrings on one side, um, leather armor, and um, looks pretty hardy for that matter too. Um, but she also comes as she sees you guys and starts coming over to you, um, and says. Uh, but what you also notice with her is there is a giant raccoon walking beside her. Um, and the raccoon is probably about as tall as she is. It's got a bundle of various goods and materials um, strapped to its back. Um, but it's it's just kind of ambling up beside her as she approaches you at the booth. Says, well, you're older than our usual, but that probably means that you're here looking for work. Can I pet the raccoon? Uh, you said... Uh, Keith? And Keith just kind of kind of crawls up and sits on his back conscious and puts his hands together like this and puts his head out and just just lets you pet him. Perfect. Juniper has been petting all the animals on the way in. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so my name is Z and and you've now met Keith. Um, and are you here for the job? Or am I being a bit presumptuous and thinking you're just an interesting looking group of people who actually want to pet a sheep? Uh. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, you're you're not talking to people, so we'll go with the job. (laughs) Um, Are you... They will take it. (laughs) Yeah, okay. Now, it's, it's not a light thing. I hope you're up for it, but, um, come, come to a side. And she just kind of pulls you to a side and letting other people come in through the gate says, what do you know of Kraken? The like, snack? Oh, not the snack. No, I'm, I, they do make those there at the, at the shop if you're interested later, but no. The actual creature, Kraken. Um. It's big. It's scary, but yet pettable. <laughs> oh, right. foul and disgusting beastie. Well, <laughs> I heard it was delicious. Do you sell those? Uh, no. Calamari. No. Yeah. See, uh, we're we're supposed to be sanctuary though, and that's that's the challenge that we're experiencing here. I'm not really sure um, how best to describe this to you, but um, yes, they're scary creatures. Kraken are definitely scary creatures, but they're also uh, very much important for the ecosystem. They keep things in balance. Um, 
And so, and as all of the creatures do that we take care of here at the sanctuary. Um, and so when we find some that are in distress, we tend to take them in until they can manage themselves. Um, a, a kraken is one that we're thinking of locating because as I, I've got stories that are to, have told me that it's been stranded, but not just a kraken. There, there's a number of these types of creatures. Um, what do you know of phoenixes? Um. Chicken. <laughs> um, don't they like rebirth or something? Th that they do, they do. But when they are rebirth born, they are small. Um, or l how about um, have, have you ever seen a dragon? Not a person. lizard. So here's the thing. This is what I am tasked to do. I. I would like to be able to get... The, the, there's stories of these creatures nearby that really could use some help. And I would like to be able to provide it, but I can't. From where I am right now, I am in charge of this place. And it's starting to get relatively busy. So, is this something that you could see yourself doing? What kind of help? Well, um, first of all, everything I have heard, there are just rumors. I haven't been able to prove anything. But I do hear of this uh, um, unicorn that is stranded, a kraken that is stranded. All of these creatures are injured or away from their parents or something along those lines and, and need to be cared for. And actually, if you if you look just over there, just behind the ostrich paddock, uh, you can see um, the, the little girl there that's uh, kind of pale-faced. And, and you guys look over there and you do see um, a, probably about eight years old. Um, and she is actually feeding ostriches and uh, the ostriches and, and seems to be actually setting up bedding for them and such as well. And um, she's kind of the reason I can't go anywhere yet. And so, while I would probably be okay at finding some of these creatures, I don't know that I would be able to wrangle them myself. Um, I certainly wouldn't be able to do wrangle them with that cherub in, in, in there, too. And so, that would be it. You would be wrangling the unique creatures of Nocturne. That's me. We're going to strangle them? Not strangle. Why? Wrangle, as in to gather them and bring them to safety. Oh. Uh. That's boring. <laughs> Have you ever worked with a dragon before? I eat them, but working with them? Uh, Sounds no, not to me, me like it would be an appropriate challenge for you, don't you think? I'll help strang no, wrangle them. <laughs> And she'll look to the other two of you guys, just kind of with a question mark on her face. My goal in life is to pet every animal in the history of mankind, so I oh. accept. We can definitely help you with that. There's a, there, there are a couple of unique ones here already, but nothing as unique as I'm asking you to find yet. What if the dragon doesn't want to be wrangled? We eat um, them. Well, no, don't eat them, because... Oh. Well, this one... If uh, the, the challenge is, I think most of these would become particularly useful creatures for us. Not just for petting, but could be used quite well to um, ensure safety. Not for them, as well as for those that befriend them. That's how Keith and I ended up working together. And you can see the rabbit just kind of, or sorry, rabbit, rabbit, raccoon just kind of over, just kind of eating something, just kind of. So, okay. You, you, for certain that you'll take this on? There is coin in it for you, by the way. Yeah, I don't need that. I'm a wilderness lady. Um, are they all in the same location? 
No, that would be too easy. No, no, uh, so the the rumor I have is that the uh, there's a, a dragon building horde uh, of some sort, probably, obviously, therefore, very young, um, out at Carneath Castle. And uh, the Kraken, I, all I've heard is, I assume it's a Kraken, based off of some of the descriptions I have. It could be not, but it, it's also very, very small, which makes me think it's a baby. Wash ashore. And a baby Kraken. I think they're large creatures and it's they've described it as being like they described it sounded like a kraken to me but it was what it was in a basically what would be a pond and so that, that would definitely be a form of distress for the creature um a, there's a unicorn somewhere out in the hidden gardens um there's a creature in Clafton Tower that Sounds to be uh, kind of stranded there, and doesn't necessarily. N I don't really know what exactly is going on with that. Um, but and then there, the, oh, the, the griffins. Forgot to mention the griffins. Um, there's a chance you might even be able to. I don't know. Ride one, perhaps. You'd have to go to Stonehill Cliffs, though. A little bit that way. So Connie is that way, and she starts gesturing in the directions. Well, if we did the griffins first, then maybe we could ride them to all the other locations. That's a possibility. I, if you can convince them, I can, we do have cliffs here for them. They would, they would like it here. I think. Hmm. What do you guys think? Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> okay. Well, if, if somewhere. That's, I'm going to try and set up, with with her help, a little bit of uh, 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 places for them to be comfortable once they arrive. Or at least try to. I think I may ask, um, if you can find, if, if you find them and you notice that they have need of something to make their comfort here more plausible, for example, dragons tend to have like a, a, a treasure hoard of some sort, if you're able to help bring it here so that we can also care for the creature in a place where they would actually like to stay. That would be great. Okay. I think it's settled. All right. Um, then you said the griffins first? Is that what you're going to do? Okay, then Stonehill Cliff, you can see just kind of the edge of it, just out, uh, just over there, and she kind of gestures to a place that's around 10 kilometers away. You can kind of see um, the, the these cliffs that kind of draw, that, that rise up over top of everything. Force, the force kind of extends up towards these cliffs, and then just this uh, cliff face that drops down a distance away. Um, that's That's probably your best bet there, to go looking for them. All right, mm. let's do this. One more raccoon pet. <laughs> and 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 Keith is still. Juniper has just been petting the raccoon this whole time. <laughs> yeah, just enjoying his food. And uh, as you guys kind of agree to do it, um, the child actually that uh, that Z was talking about earlier on actually comes up. It kind of tugs on on her ropes, uh, or tugs on her elbow, and says, "Um, I think that the penguins need help." And she's, oh, of, of course, Olivia. Let's let's go to it. If if you'll excuse me, I'll leave you to it. And she just picks up Olivia, puts her on the back of Keith, and starts walking her back to in further into the animal sanctuary. Oh, penguins, penguins. I know. I wish I could pet them. Well, so are we going to the dragons? Oh no, sorry. Griffins. Yes, the other flying one. Alright. So, is there anything you guys want to do to prepare before you guys leave this little podunk town, or are you guys ready to head on out of Sherdale? Um... 
I said, just do it. <laughs> All right. Up and off, uh, Adam, you go. You guys start making your way out of Shiradale and start kind of making your way in the general direction that um, uh, that Z suggested to you. Let me find my lovely sheets for it. Oh, way down here. There we go. Okay. Um, so you have a couple of options for how you can approach this. You can basically you can try to approach this from getting to the tops of the cliff, or you can approach it from the bottom, going to the base of the cliffs and seeing what you can see from below. What would you guys probably end up uh, targeting in, uh, to do so? Base of the cliffs, I would think. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I'm not very hardy. Let's see here. Base of no the worry. cliff he is, then. I'll do my best to protect him. All right. Or so I'm feed you to the griffins. I am also going to get... Sorry, I keep interrupting. You go ahead, do it. Uh, okay. Uh, so then, as you guys are walking along, I'm going to ask you guys kind of describe what is it that your cre- your characters would probably do as a way of kind of keeping an eye out for things, seeing what all is around you, um, preparing, uh, what are some nervous tics they might do, or something along those lines. Um, go for it. And we'll start off with, uh, this time we'll go backwards, we'll go with Vio. Well, Vio... It's kind of distracted all of the time when whenever she sees a flower or a bunny or a grass she just darts her attention to that oh something like oh a cat oh a dog ooh a dragon <laughs> kind of like that all right what about uh Peleus? He does his best, but he's not great at this sort of thing. <laughs> the outside, not too good with that. All right, and then Juniper. Um, she would try to um, just like naturally run forward and um, just try to like uh, navigate the path as best as she could. All right. Well, then I'm going to get both Vio and Juniper to roll for me perception checks. And we'll get our roller out here. So we can see the things. And... Perception. Uh, oh, dang it, I did that wrong. This one. There we go. Yep. Yeah, I'm easy to distracted. <laughs> Ooh, a ladybug. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> and... Uh, Juniper's perception of a 17. Nice. Okay, so um, you guys decide that you're going to take a uh, take a path that kind of goes down um, a, a, a along the base of the cliff af- after a fashion. I just rolled a nat 1 on an encounter check. Uh, and so having just rolled a nat 1 on an encounter check, that is a nat 1. It is 5 bucks. Yay there for charity! Go. Got it. All right. So then, um, as you guys are, with, there's obviously no counter though. As you guys start walking, uh, making your way along the uh, cliff face, what you notice is um, the, the forest kind of extending off to your right, and then up along this cliff face, as if something has just kind of scarred the mountainside and just kind of shoved it, shoved it down a little bit. But as you continue along the cliff face. Uh, you, or, sorry, continue along your path. The cliffs get taller and taller and taller beside you. Um, uh, Juniper, you also start to notice, uh, it, yeah, by way of hearing, off in the distance, um, the sounds of a waterfall. And this is going to take you a good uh, good chunk of a day, like about half a day to get to your destination. Uh, so it's going to be like, uh, the sun is going to be now, not at its peak, but on its way back down. Um, still, still plenty of sunlight though. It's not anywhere near sunset yet. Um, but you guys are now basically walking along this cliff face, and you can actually hear the the crashing sounds of a waterfall uh, echoing. And you do notice in the in the sky a few um, 
smaller birds uh, kind of moving, uh, flitting from like bush to bush, a group of like sparrow-like creature uh, birds kind of flocking in different directions, um, but nothing up high. No birds up high at this point in time. And until you get a little bit closer to it, you do get to a place where uh, you finally get close enough to the waterfall that it is that you can see it as it kind of crests around uh, a part of the cliff. The waterfall is just massive, this massive um, rain and mist that kind of comes out from beside the cliff and just uh, creates this cl uh, cloud of water vapor and droplets as it crashes down into this into the base and has this somewhat of a larger pool before it starts to actually meander off as a river uh, further to your left, uh, it, deeper into Nocturne. And, but, but the, uh, the waterfall is easily uh, 45 feet wide. It is a massive waterfall, and it's just crashing down. And uh, looking around at the top, um, you do see a couple of things kind of flitting around large bird-like creatures that seem to almost be playing in the water up there but they're in the cliff which by here by this point in time is around a hundred feet up hmm. could there be griffins uh roll a nature check this is what I'm not good at. Let me see. Forty. Not bad. Yeah. Um, you do clock as one as one of the creatures kind of uh, seems to take flight, and it's got the long tail and definitely got the telltale signs of a griffin. Uh, so I would say you could feel quite confident that you've found for yourself a griffin play space after a fashion. So cute. <laughs> Now, these ones tend to be somewhat larger. But you do see a griffin, nonetheless. And they're up high, unfortunately. Leo raises her hand and shouts, Griffin, we're here! Let me pet you! Come oh. down! Announcing <laughs> your presence. Marvelous. Okay. Um... They, a couple of, uh, they kind of stop for a brief moment. Um, Juniper, with your particularly good perception, you kind of get a sense there that the, one of them is, you actually look up and you see what you think is an eagle head um, kind of peeking over the cliff face and just looking at you and watching you. An eagle. Um... Well, and, and you already know the griffins have an eagle face eagle front talons, but the body of a lion with wings. Got it. Okay. So, I would actually like to cast a spell. I'm going to do some druidy stuff. Okay. Um, I'm going to cast Speak with Animals and yell out um, to the griffin I see. Okay. And just say, Hello, friend! Uh, is everything all right here? All right. Um, roll for me a d20 to see if you can shout loud enough that they can hear something through the waterfall. Okay. Ah, there's not much of a response, unfortunately. Okay. I tried. I'll just wave my arms, like, wildly. <laughs> Oh, honey, let me try. And Vio shouts, Kaka! Kaka! <laughs> <laughs> the druid can't do it, so we kaka. <laughs> so you kaka, and uh, I'm, I'm going to get you to roll a d20 to see if you can get it up loud enough that they can actually hear you. Nope. <laughs> uh, wow, consistency. At least that's consistency. All right. Uh, so uh, as you guys kind of do whatever 
shouting and speaking to the top of the mountain of the cliff that you can do. Um, no response. And then a few moments later, you see the eagle head juniper just kind of tucked back, and then suddenly the, a large griffin has leapt up into the air and is folding its wings back and starting to dive straight at you. Um. Okay, so I will noticing this first, warn everybody else, and then I'm just gonna kind of put my hands up and be like, "We come in peace." Hopefully, let's speak with animals still going. All right. Vio follows, still saying "kaka kaka kaka." <laughs> now she's uh, th this particular creature is looking particularly angry as it comes and get it as it's coming down. It's coming down fast, like it can go really, really quickly. I think I'm going to get you to roll initiative. Okay. And now I don't have your tokens up, so let me get your tokens up here real quick first. Let's do this. Uh, come on, tokens. A bing and a bop and a, a juniper token on the screen, a paleos token on the screen, and a veo token on the screen. Go ahead and click your tokens and roll yourself some initiative. And I'm gonna I can't click the on the token. Yeah, same. What? Lame. Same here. You can't click on the token? Lame. Uh, okay, I'll solve that. Ding. Okay, Juniper, you should be able to click on yours now. And... Uh, hang on. This is uh, Peleus. You should now be able to click on yours. And... Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, last but not least, Vio should now be able to click on yours. Initiative. All right. Or it's not good at initiative. Oh, uh, I can do something where I can boost it. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Cut down that. A minus two on agility. <laughs> oh, look, that's a nat 20 on that, too. Guess what that means? Another oh, that, $5. That's a quid. Yay. All right, and that 20 on their initiative. Here comes my initiative next. Uh, ding, ding, and come on over here. Work with me, machine. Uh, let's go with my initiative. All I'm right, that was a pretty strong... Okay, I did not hit a night net 20, but I still did better than y'all. So, Interesting. Okay, so my griffin's going to come first in the initiative. Uh, let's see here. Let's get this down in descending order. First person up is me. And I think she's most perturbed by the caca caca. So she is going to go <laughs> for a dive straight at you and meet with claws extended out and beak just just uh, screeching down at you it's going to be a a few attack a couple of attacks a beak and claws and that's not the right soundtrack that's the right soundtrack so do does an 18 hit of course oh well then you're gonna take not all, if, as it comes at you it's just gonna claw at grip its claws into your shoulders and peck at your head immediately and that is going to be uh, 21 points of damage as the oh. talons sink in and the beak just uh, bores into you. That's painful. I love Juniper, it. Juniper, look, he's petting me. He wants to be pet. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> he likes All me. All right. Uh, that brings it to Vio. It is your turn. Oh, I got fuzzy. Okay. Um. Since Vio felt that, uh, she would like to go into a rage. Oh, okay. And then. What said rage uh, happen? And then. Um, is the griffin on my level? On the ground? Sorry. Uh, the griffin is on the. Yeah, gr griffin's on you, basically. Uh, is he grappling me? Um, no, I wouldn't call it grappling, but I, I would, I'd say you'd be able to pull out of the talons. Um, but definitely within melee. Hmm. 
So is there no way for me to grapple him as well? You could certainly try and grab the legs that are on your shoulders if you wanted to. Yeah, sure. I'll right. try that. All right. Go Since ahead. Since I'm and try raging, that. I have advantage on strength checks. So, so go ahead. Twenty-one. Twenty. What? Yeah, I guess I got to do a strength check of my own here. Hey, a strength check. Um. Here it comes. Well, the nat 24 is on the top. Nope, 16 uh, versus your 21 because you advantage. So, yes, you are successful and able to grab onto its front talons and hold on to it if you would like. Oh, wait. I may... What's that called? Wild magic. Do I have to roll on the wild magic table? Mm, this, is, this is a type of barbarian that I am not 100% familiar with. So let me do a quick little look here. As I do some learning, uh, da, 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 wild magic barbarian, uh, wild magic rules. Okay, B -b -b barbarian. Nope, that's path of wild magic. There we go. So in the path of wild magic, let's see here. Um, you can. Uh, Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Uh, it was, it was an action. That's not what we're talking about. The magical energy rolling. When you enter your rage, roll on the wild magic table. Uh, this D8 table. So it's a D8 that you're rolling. Okay. Aha. An eight. A bowl of light shoots for my chest. <laughs> but you could choose the target. So who is your target? The Griffin. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm going. Uh, I'm going to shoot some love onto the gr Griffin. Oh, I love it. I Pos like it a lot. Positive vibes. <laughs> All right. So as you enter into your wild magic, you grapple it and just kind of pull it down as your chest just suddenly beams out, Care Bear style, at it. Um, and that's the damage of the one d six. Two points Reject. of damage to this creature. Uh, let's see. And he's blinded as well. All until right. next turn. Okay, blinded as well. Alrighty. Um, let's see here. Do I have. Hang on. Why didn't that work? Work with me here, machine. There we go. Got it. That did the trick. Okay, so blinded, you say. Let me find my blinded thing. Blinded. Awesome. Okay. Just bing! And you guys see this this um, a bolt of uh, bolt of, of love light, as it were. Just kind of goes uh, beaming out across the sky into the face of this uh, eagle, into the eagle-like head of this creature. Uh, does that end your turn, Vio? Wait. Um, I, it says here that you must succeed a constitution saving throw. Yeah, I. What's your What's your DC? It's well, eight plus two plus strength modifier. Fourteen. Uh, then yeah, definitely. I didn't think it would succeed with my twelve. So you're yeah, it definitely ah, failed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, with that. So I'm just holding on to the claws of the griffin. Sounds good. Right. Grapple. Oh, I guess I got to put the grapple condition on here too. He is grappled. All right. And then I would like to bring the griefin to um, Juniper. Okay. Go I'm... close to Juniper. Look, you guys look, are Juniper. Close griefin. Uh, I think it he loves too. hurting it. <laughs> 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 um, so I still have speak with animals going, so I want to use it as much as I can. Um, I'm going to say, look, we're not here to hurt you. We're from the animal sanctuary. Um, we just wanted to see if you need any help. So that would be my action to say that. Okay. And then my bonus will be healing word on VO. Okay. Very nice. Okay. So go ahead and roll a healing you. word and then also roll for me a persuasion check. Oh god, I have a negative one. I forgot. I wasn't dying. <laughs> 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 
Love so it. five healing. Five healing and for persuasion. That'll probably be the only useful thing I do. Um That's a three. Oh yeah. Um Okay. And is that <laughs> gonna be your entire turn then? Uh yeah. Brings us to Peleus. You hear Juniper, you see this creature come and just like slam down on Vio, who winces a time briefly under the pain, but then immediately grabs it, looks up with wide eyes of uh, of joy, and this and a light just kind of beams out at this griffin, and she just starts walking. Look, a griffin walking over to Juniper. Juniper's like, we're trying to be nice. What are you doing, Peleus? How far away is the griffin from me? I'd say you're probably about 10 feet away. Like, you guys weren't traveling with a big distance between you, and the griffin just came straight at you. I'm going to smack it with my warhammer, then. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Roll for smack. I love the difference in solutions. Every one I'm okay. using my shield. shield missing. Keeps your AC up. I get it. Good call. Yeah, that's, that's going to miss. Is it? Not brilliant. So I'm going to use a bonus action to cast... Spiritual weapon. Ah, okay. Spiritual weapon on its way. What does your spiritual weapon look like? Looks like a big morning star, but it's, it's on a chain, like a, a spiked ball on a chain. Okay. With, I can find uh, a handle. It's like a flail kind of. Idea, right? I'm black. Let's see How could you, Peleus? This is a very friendly eagle. Why are you hurting it? <laughs> All right, so there is your spiritual weapon, we'll say. If you're okay with that. I can attack with it, can't I, this round? Uh, actually, you can. It, do, it, does, it comes with an attack on its first round. 22. Uh, 22 definitely hits. Go ahead and roll out your damage as, you, as it smacks under the, 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 the um, protestations of Vio. Uh, eight points of force damage. Alrighty then. That brings anything else on your turn? Just uh, in, enough, thou foul beastie. Submit. Intimidation check. That's a hot intimidation. Nicely done. Uh, I gotta find my griffin thingy. Uh, where's my griffin? Oh, my griffin. Oh, no. Why are you doing this to me? Roll 20. Okay, there we go. Got it. Okay, so. Um, ding, 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 ding. And uh, insight on you. Let's see. Yeah. You've, okay. It's kind of, it's gonna, it kind of starts to look like it's cowering a little bit away from you. Um, as it's being held by Vio, um, but it's also got other issues that it's considering. So, is that the end of your turn, Peleus? Yeah, that's it now. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna keep clawing at you, um, Vio. So let's see if a couple of other hits happen. Uh, and actually, now that we can do this, we can get the chat involved if they would like. By the way, chat, you can roll for me anytime you would like. And the way you do so is by typing roll exclamation mark roll 20 no spaces that's the easiest way to do it um and i will take your rules even if it's it, I, I even if i don't call for it i'll hold on to your roll until it's time so go ahead and do some rolls for me twitch chat um in the meantime i'm gonna roll the first attack which is the claws and a boom Oh, that was a nat 20 on one side, but not. I, how do you. Does a 12 a scratch at you, Vio? Yes, of a course. 12 hit, a 12 hits you? <laughs> yes, my AC is 11. Oh. oh. <laughs> All right, good to know. So you. Uh, it starts just kind of digging its claws and kind of scraping across the wounds it's already given you to try to get even deeper in. And it causes you. Um, 14 points of damage halved because you're raging, so it's only 7 points of damage. And <laughs> it's also going to go and go at another peck, but it's going to go... Um, oh, it's got disadvantage. 
No, that was okay. That was the disadvantage roll. So here comes the, another roll at disadvantage. It's gonna try and peck at you, but it can't see you, even though you're holding onto it. So it's just kind of go for going for where it thinks you are. But it's a thirteen. Still hits me. <laughs> so yeah, you t- would have been eight points of piercing damage as it's going towards where your chest hits your shoulder instead. So four points of damage instead of the eight because you're raging. Mm-hmm. And that's gonna bring us now to. Uh, it doesn't bother. It's it's not worried about escaping you right now. It's it's got something to peck at. Um, so that's going to bring us now to Vio. Okay. First of all, do not mind the pale mean man. He doesn't mean to hurt you. And then I'm going to Vio will slam the griffin down to the ground. Okay. Strength check. Mm-hmm. Actually, go for athletics. I'll go with athletics. Okay. Athletics. Yeah, athletics. Uh, 23. 23. Yeah, I'm not... I don't think I can... Oh, I could. I could combat that. But only just. Not enough. 23 wins as you slam mm-hmm. its feet uh, off, of, off of your shoulders and down into the ground. The griffin still extends easily five feet in height above you. Um... So, like, the fact that you're manhandling this griffin is slightly impressive to the other two, for sure. This large beast just smashed to the ground on its feet. Um, pro- do you want it prone, or do you want it on its feet? Prone. Prone it is. So it is now Boom. prone. And then for my bonus action, I'm going to shoot it again with some positive good vibes. <laughs> for a d6 <laughs> all right shooting more positive vibes at it with radiant damage of five points uh let's see here let me get that on there uh did, did, why is this there okay there we go that's where i'm looking for five points of radiant damage as you just kind of blast it in the face again uh it's going to do another constitution saving throw to see if it takes this though uh, let's see here. Uh, it will save. be at... Uh... This time it saves. So do we remember what it does that if it saves? Well, it says that it has disadvantage for sight checks. Saves, sorry. Um, <coughs> yes, but only until the start of that next turn. So it's okay again now. So... Oh, okay. But you can use it does again take each of your damage, turns, I guess. So this time it won't take mm-hmm. damage. And so it just kind of pulls mm-hmm. its head back uh, just in time to not and, and kind of like averts its gaze before you can actually blast it directly. It's not a direct hit of Blast of Love, uh, but it is definitely uh, aware of your attempts at showing it love. How about that? Uh, yeah. Uh, am I far from Paleus? Uh, I'd say you're about uh, five feet away from him, because he closed the. Ga- well, eh, yeah, he closed the gap there. So. Well, I was going to drag the grief onto him, but yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah, he's I- I'll there just there grab sure. him. All right, mm-hmm. so then uh, that brings us to Juniper. Okay, so um, I want to use Thorn Whip, but um. For flavor purposes, instead of pulling uh, the griffin towards me, could I try to attempt to help, like, restrain? Yes. You know what? I'm good. For, I would be game for that. There will still okay. be some potential piercing damage. Uh, that's fine. Uh, roll a... Oh, druids. I'm trying to decide whether or not I want you to use... Uh, what's your... A spellcasting modifier, or a spellcasting um, ability, is it wisdom? Yeah, it's wisdom. Okay, then I was, I'm trying to think of how I would want you to do this. Um, because normally with it, when a wizard tries to do something creative, I say go for an arcana check. But that's an intelligence-based thing. I'm thinking for a wisdom-based thing, I th- think... Uh, nature would be a best way to see if you can manipulate your thorns 
to not cause to not pull but rather restrain so give me a quick nature check to see if you can do that and just to check nature is still intelligence is that still oh is that yeah i'm that's not what i'm going for then give me one second um maybe it was survival i was thinking survival survival totally that's the one i was thinking (laughs) cool 24 Uh, 24 yeah you can totally manage this so go ahead and roll your thorn whip out 13 13 just hits oh thank goodness and then i'm trying to make it as non-lethal as possible okay oh of course i max out on the dice (laughs) yeah i recognize the non-lethalness but you do see that this creature's got a good chunk of hit points left and so you extend your hand out for your thorn whip and rather than, it does lash and uh, wrap around it, uh, but you, it doesn't, you don't pull it back. You just kind of let it release and let it tangle around the wings and around the legs of this creature. Okay. It is now Perfect. restrained once again. Actually, restrained then, as opposed to just grappled now. Nice. That'll work. Um, then how's Vio looking? Do I get it? You get a sense there's some that. blood dripping from her from her wounds in a in a significant, relatively significant way. Okay, um, I'm trying to decide whether to do another healing word. Um, I'll heal you if you die. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. A loving statement, nonetheless. Okay, so that brings us to pa- uh, Paleus then. I'm going to get across to the griffin again and um, cast and inflict wounds upon it. Casting and inflict uh, wounds. All right. Uh, That's definitely hitting. Go for it. Roll it out. And it is, it has been damaged. It's also prone. It's also prone, so totally with advantage anyway. 10 points of necrotic damage as you can see some of the feathers of the wings start to blacken and almost get like uh, almost dust apart a little bit. And they drain the energy. It's life force from the, from the creature. Absolutely. It's like it's it's screeching out in the various forms of pain that you're getting, each of you guys are giving it. Um, fighting against the thorn whip and um, just black you you kind of black and it's just it's back at you i'm going to attempt to uh, put it out of its misery for completely now with my uh, spiritual weapon <laughs> all right roll for attack with your spiritual weapon i'm a bonus action 19. okay now um go ahead and roll me your damage on that straight up damage at seven points seven points of damage all righty then it's starting to look like it's getting pretty good solidly hurt it's definitely taking some damage from you guys is there anything else on your turn no that's it all right that's gonna bring us now to i believe it brings it back to me Let me just find my turn initiative there that is okay it does bring it back to me so restrained prone pissed she is going to try and escape. Uh, this is a strength check against your spell your spell save DC, um, Juniper. Okay. Uh, that's a 14. And, oh, two 11s. You are <laughs> not angry enough there, bird. Um, yeah, it's going to try and fight and just look up at you as it strains. And it's just going to drop limp. What was that first uh, spell that you cast on there again, please, Um, Juniper? The animals, uh, speak with animals, is that what it was? Yeah, it lasts for ten minutes. Alright. Let me see here then. Uh, I don't think I've done anything to interrupt it. I'm just trying to read something up on it real quick. That one there. There we go. Got it. Uh, 
Um, yeah. All okay. So you're just you're gonna be able to interpret its wails. Um, and it's basically it, it, there. The problem with this particular creature is that uh, it would speak with animals. Is that the creature? The animals actually have to be intelligent enough to have full length conversations. Uh, if you want to have a full length conversation. But it's not that intelligent. It is screeching out for uh, saying uh, basically the same kind of feel as the word intruders, intruders. Go away, intruders. Okay. Uh, that brings us to the end of its turn, bringing us back to Vio. <clears throat> huh. I'm still alive. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to jump on its back and sleeper hold it. Try to <laughs> knock it unconscious. All right. I will let you try to do that with... Let's go with a uh, athletics check to see if you can do it. It's restrained, so I'm going to say it's easy to get onto their back. Um... Who does it think he is? Jungle boy. Girl. Girl. Jungle girl. girl. Yeah. Girl. Jungle girl. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that does not break the D their AC. And so you're you're able to wrap around it, but it's got a really thick neck. It's pretty hard to actually pull it and pull it in to actually try to choke off its wind supply. And then bonus action on the positive good vibes ray. Yeah, you're hugging it. It's gonna <laughs> blast it straight in the back of the head. Um, but it's got a con save ability here. And oh, I don't. You said your DC is fourteen. Yes, it's, sir. It fails. Roll me that damage. One. It's Just, a whopping one. Bing! But it's also <laughs> blinded again. So five dollars. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's five dollars. Dad blast. No, that's a. No, that's not, that's that's not a D twenty. Uh, fine, it's five dollars. Okay. Fine, 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 fine. fine. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. <sighs> I'm sorry for pressuring you. <laughs> oh, I'm good. It's all good. This is for the right cause, right? Like, if I'm gonna have to go into my piggy bank, then that's a good reason. So, um, that brings us. Does that end your turn for you? Yes, sir. Uh, all right, Juniper, you are up next. As just this, and it's like right up against the back of the griffin's head, so it's almost like leaking love light, just bing, kind of out from the back of this thing's head. <laughs> um. So, still with speak of animals, um, I'll say we're trying not to hurt you. Just stop fighting, and um. To kind of prove um, that I'm speaking truth, <laughs> I'm gonna run and tackle Peleus. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm here for it. Um, <laughs> what have I done? That's a good question. Let uh, Are you going to let her tackle you? No. No? All right, then it's a sp opposed to the I see it checks. coming. I'm trying to sidestep it. <laughs> I you know I would allow an acrobatic uh, athletics or acrobatics. You guys get to choose what you would do, but it is opposed oh, checks right. nonetheless. Okay. Nineteen. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> I'm a dexterous druid. <laughs> so you go to to, uh, to get at Peleus, and as you do, you grip his to his wrist, grab his other wrist. And kind of spin him around and knock him down to the ground to, and kind of pin him to the ground. So, Peleus, you are now pinned underneath Juniper. Gonna say anything to him? Just like, nope, I'm doing this. Um, I was just say, stop trying to kill it. It's just a cute little birdie. Peleus, it's your turn. I'm not trying to kill it, you stupid. I'm just trying to like smash it up a bit, <laughs> knock it out. <laughs> I'm gonna attack it with my spiritual weapon anyway. <laughs> Roll it out. I forgot about that. <laughs> I'm acting it from underneath, best I can. Oh, it misses. 
you throw her uh, you've been so thrown off that you, you you almost lose vision of your spiritual weapon you make it swing at something but it just whiffs past wait isn't it prone oh it is prone that blast you you're right okay fine 19 hits <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. Sky saw it too in the chat, so you're not the only one. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, it is. It hits, is it? It does hit, so go ahead and roll out your damage. Five, Five force. points of force damage. I've got too many windows open on my screen, which is why I didn't remember my conditions. Okay, uh, there we go. Solved. Five more points of smack damage is your flail, your... your Floating spiritual flail smashes it into the back behind uh, Vio. Can I try and extricate myself from underneath? Yes, you can. Again, it's, <laughs> a, it's a post checks again. What do I need? Uh, your athletics choice. Again. Athletics or acrobatics would be fine. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Both of you didn't roll so great on that. Yeah, you're stuck there, Pilo. <laughs> I pay a bit of some Nihilo. Paleus, Nihilo. There we go. The battle of the two weaklings. The battle of the two weaklings. <laughs> Does that end your turn? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Um, I'm going to say, um, Juniper, I'm going to get you to roll a persuasion check trying to convince them that this uh, that you really don't actually mean them any harm. Uh, it would have been a disadvantage because you guys have basically smacked it a whole bunch of times or, you know, light beamed it and blinded it. Um but uh, you're trying to get actually no it's blind it would not have noticed you actually attack attack oh. Helios. so <laughs> I mean, it's no. still a disadvantage <laughs> go ahead and roll your uh disadvantage persuasion check Ooh. um this is gonna go well not bad for me <laughs> that's with a disadvantage that's actually a pretty decent roll i'm gonna call that a half success you need another half before anything else happens on this thing. But it is its turn, and it's going to try and break free of your thorn whip with a strength check of... Here it comes, here it comes. Ugh, That's what 14. it needed. That's what it needed? Yeah. Yes. All right. So, it breaks. You hear the thorn is... And just they all snap up and the wings stretch out and immediately immediately buffet the ground and launch itself as it launches itself with Vio grabbing I'm onto flying. its neck on its back and just <laughs> up into the air. I would like Vio to roll for me a dexterity saving throw, please. Oh, I thought I was flying. Oh boy. <laughs> you might be. But you might be without anything to hold on to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I fell. Oh, a zero. <laughs> That's a zero on the roll. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sky, it's probably going to be around two or three sessions. Um, the, oh my word. Uh, Wait, just a question, DM. I, I yeah, was yeah. strangling it. So wasn't that supposed to be a, a strength check or a save to hold on? Um, no, actually, this one is actually going to be more of a dexterity thing because it's not so much your ability to kind of grip onto it, but it, as it is when it lifts off, the wings kind of knock you around, so you're trying to keep your balance on it more than anything. Oh, okay. Um, so the, in this particular case, here's the funny thing. There's actually a table for what happens here in the module. The, the table starts at a one, mm -hmm. not a zero. So... Um, yeah, no, nope, we're going to have to have you fall and take some damage. Uh, as you try, as it buffets up and lifts up about 10 feet up into the air, because um, that's all you could hold on for. It just uh, knocks you for a loop. Uh, let's go with a chunk. Let's go roll. Actually, let's use this thing. This thing's way better. Uh, let's go roll a d6. There we go. So, oh, luckily for you, you just basically land. Um, you manage to kind of flip yourself around, get your feet back underneath you, and you twist your ankle as it hits the ground. Maybe even sprain it, just a, a good solid pounding to the ground. It's bludgeoning damage and you're raging. So it's one point halved. 
It's still zero. one point. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Just, 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 I hate the confusion on that. Okay. Um, Let's just say maybe I won't be prone when I fall. I'll go with that. I'll go with that. I like that very much. Um, and it, But it is now taken up into the sky and is screeching back. It turns around, screeches back at you. It's about 60 feet. No, sorry, 40 feet up into the air. Just uh, flapping at you and just screeching at you. And it start, uh, uh, but then it's kind of looks like it's about to turn and start flying back up towards the cliff face again. Uh, so it is now uh, Vio's turn. You are back on the ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, how how high is the griffin again? Forty feet. Forty. Yeah. With my strength, is it possible to throw the lightest party member to the griffin? <laughs> who is the first of all? Who is the lightest par party member? Oh. Is that Dak or is that June? Uh, sorry, Peleus or is that Juniper? I have no strength. If that helps, I don't really know. Let's go. Uh, wait. Let's see here. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, throwing 40 feet up into the air basically means you're throwing whoever it is you choose to throw. And I'm going to let you choose it in the end. Eight times their height up into the air. I'm willing to let you try, but the DC is ridiculous. Uh, well... Juniper game if you want to go for it. But I, Vio's kind of mad at Pelius because it's been hitting the Griffin, and he's pale. Yeah. And he's and he's the pale matters. Okay, carry on. I'm suddenly going to booking a tanning salon session. Thank you very much for that. Okay. <laughs> But the th but the thing is, he has a spiritual weapon, so maybe he can hit it with a spiritual weapon while he's up in the air. So I'm going to throw Peleus. All right, um, roll for me an athletics check. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Are you're testing him out from under Juniper. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, he's up for. Yeah. Juniper, I'm would going... you let him try to? Grapple Peleus? Ah, yeah, if I get the sense that he's being okay, thrown. So, Peleus, you can also <laughs> go for a contested uh, roll on this too. So go ahead and roll uh, contestedly on it. Uh, athletics or acrobatics, your choice to try to get away from VO. 19. Oh my god. Okay, so with a, with a 19, you are able to grab him by the ankles and you're about to start to like um, hammer throwing him up into the air. You're spinning him around, and um, as you, uh, but as you're doing it, you realize I'm not going to be able to get him up that high. With a plus four on your life check, you're, you're still going to throw him up. Are you going to still throw him up towards the Griffin, or just throw him away? Oh wait, he will take damage if he falls. He's going to take damage because uh, you're throwing him, period. It's just how much damage is, you're letting him take. I'm raging right now and I don't have that much intelligence. So... Play let's just say I, I failed to throw upwards and just lob him. Okay. Ten feet I away. Will... Ten feet away. Uh, roll for me a d6. Oh. <laughs> Max. <laughs> okay. So with that d6, uh, and with that six points of damage, so you hammer throw him, try to throw him up, and you get a good solid arc. 45 degrees. Um, as you come and land on the ground, it's not actually ground you land on. Uh, Peleus, you actually land on a jagged rock about three feet into the river and are now <laughs> in water. 
I'm wet as well. That's you're what you crap? get for hurting the griffin. Look, griffin, he's hurt. Do I take damage? <laughs> uh, yeah, you take six points of damage as your back just cracks against a rock under the water. What the hell? I'm taking more damage from my own people. <laughs> 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 Sorry about Juniper. that. End of turn. It is your turn. Um, I only you have were... one spell that would yeah. reach it. You had yeah, you had Peleus underneath you. You see as Vio comes up, grabs Peleus's uh, legs, like yeah, sure, whatever, roll off, and just hammer throws him away. Like, but the Griffin's still up there. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting attacked by this vicious animal, and you. <laughs> can i roll an insight check to see if i get the sense that the griffin's gonna come back and attack or if it's gonna like run away yeah for sure go ahead roll okay. that insight check because that will kind of determine what juniper would do i'm in for it <laughs> that's an eight it's not hiding its intentions but you're n without actually fully understanding why it looks like it is going to go directly back to the top of the of the cliffside again. Okay, if I get that sense, I'm not going to moonbeam it. Um, I will go over to um, Vio and cast Cure Wounds. Hmm. I don't want to cure wounds. <laughs> Look, man. Pull out your cure wounds. I'm sorry. <laughs> the ladies yet, are eating it for you. Nine <laughs> points of Nine. cure wounds healing. All right. That'll end your turn. Peleus. Right? That's, that's going to end your turn. You're going to go move anywhere? Uh, no, I'm going to stay put. All right. So, Peleus, Spurt. it is your turn. Spurting a sp spurt of like liquid out of my mouth from the river. I'm gonna do sleep. I'm gonna cast a sleep spell on a, a griffin before it gets out of my range. Oh, dang. What's the save on that? I I'm not sure if there is one. Oh, just put no. the spell up. I What's think that depends point? on the hit point. Oh, it's the number of dice. You're right. It's the number of dice you have to roll out. Yeah. Not All right. So. Um, that's right too. With 21 points on your D8, um, you see it kind of, you point up at it and you tell it to go to sleep. And it just, the wings kind of falter for a little bit, as you can see its head lull. And then it shakes itself back up. It drops about five feet from your spell, but it manages to keep itself conscious. Wasn't quite enough on those dice to actually put it to sleep. Uh... Close. But not quite enough. Should have done the spiritual weapon first, shouldn't I? It's 40 feet away, so your spiritual weapon wouldn't have been able to get there anyway, because you can only move it 20 feet. Right, yeah. I'll move it I to mean, you can still blow it up. Alright, it is 20 feet closer. It is now 15 feet away from the griffin. I'll have to leave is it there. Okie yeah, doke. Gotcha. <laughs> And um, it is um, the it's Griffin's turn, who's going to just go flying back up to the top of the cliff face uh, and just kind of, um, actually, it's 35 feet away. It, it, it'll get there. It'll only just get there uh, and just kind of do a quick, but as it turns to fly back up, just kind of turns it and looks at you and just screeches and just kind of goes, all the way back up to the top of the cliff face and disappears over the, the side. That's its entire turn at this point. Is there now at this point I'm actually gonna take you guys out of initiative and just say what are you guys gonna do? The griffin's gone out of sight. I don't think it wants to go with us. Oh I still want to still want to pet him. Yeah, I'm disappointed. Sorry, Peleus. Bad Peleus for hurting him. Bad Peleus. <laughs> I'm going to say your rage drops at this point, too. 
We're not going to kill it. Just like beat it up a bit. What's wrong with that? Take a few bruises. You should have said so, so I could have bonk it with my fist. Maybe slap it some, then show some positive good vibes to him. And don't ever, ever, ever pick me up by my ankles again and try and hammer throw me into a, a creature. That That's depends. <laughs> As you guys if say you... that, you do see the griffin um, seems to take to the, to, to the air again, but there's something else on its back. Uh, who's got the highest passive wisdom? Let's find that out real quick. I'm 13. Am I 13? I'm 15. Oh dear, why am I so high? 15. Okay. Well, with a 15, you'll definitely see it anyway. Um, there are two smaller griffins on its back as it's flying away. We almost I can see two We could kill the older two and then have two like baby ones to our first guy, well, circus, zoo, or well, risk collector. And there's only there's only just the one, plus the two that it's on that are on its back, the two um, adolescent no juvenile uh, griffins that are on its back as it's flying away, bleeding, hurt, and a little blackened from a necrotic damage as well. Wiping sleep out of its eye. <laughs> so what are you guys gonna do? Are you guys gonna give chase? Are you guys gonna? give up what are you guys gonna do we need to follow them don't we um yeah because if this doesn't if this doesn't go well we're kind of screwed in terms of the other animals all right so how are you going to give chase are you going to climb the cliff or are you going to try to go back around do you have um, other means of getting to the top? Because it is flying how? Away, alongside the cliff a ways away from you. How high is it flying from us? Uh, well, the cliff face itself is about 100 feet tall, so I'd say it's around 120 feet away from you, as it's just kind of following the cliff line a ways away from you, on the other side of the river that you threw uh, uh, Peleus in, into. Ah, oh, damn. I should have done this a while ago. Oh, well. Next time. I have an idea, but it involves casting another spell, which I'm low on. Share it. See what your party Jennifer says. would do it. Okay. Um, why do you think if I conjured, like, a sexy mate for the griffin? You know. And what exactly will it be doing? <laughs> Trying to lure it out so we can capture it and take it to the animal sanctuary. That's as bad as his kakaring before. Perhaps you could oh, combine okay. the two things together. <laughs> I mean, we only have up from here. We didn't do so well the first time. Maybe um, V would like to suggest that maybe we can go up the, up the cliff and conjure whatever it is you're going to conjure. Okay. I'm game. All right. I guess we're climbing a mountain. Let's see you guys do this. Let's roll out. Uh, I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to describe what your characters would do to try to ascend this mountain. And then we'll decide what your roles are going to be based off of how your characters would do this. So we're going to try and do it. Just... Oh, go ahead. Okay, sorry. Go Peleus first. Are we going to do it bit by bit with ropes? Somebody can climb ahead and 
the best climber can climb ahead and tie a rope down for the for the others. All right. What were you going to say, Juniper? Um, I think Juniper would just try to find uh, the clearest, safest path up. All right. And uh, Vio, what would you be doing? I go to Juniper and ask her, can you summon something big that can fly and bring us up to the, on top of the cliff? Um, well, it's kind of a spirit, so I don't think it's corporeal. We could try, we just might die. Oh, we can have Pelius do it first. <laughs> it's so horrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Pelius, I'm going to get you to roll for me. Actually, who's going to be the strongest climber, do you think? Go. Uh, but it's an athletics thing, by the way, to be clear about that. It could be man. Probably. Okay, uh, who would actually think that to do the climbing themselves then? What's well, your athletics I... modifier, um, Vio? Plus four. Plus four, and what's yours, Dak? Uh, Paleis. My strength modifier. Yes, uh, athletics modifier. Plus two. Uh, plus four for okay. athletics. Okay, so it could be either one of you guys. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say let's get the two of you guys both climbing with uh, um, potential help from Juniper. So Juniper, give me a survival check. Okay. Oh, and I just um, looked up the details of the spell. We could theoretically ride the sexy griffin. Is that okay? That I'm gonna give you a so chance. To... That. <laughs> That's me. Uh, I get it. Oh my gosh. Oh Dude, my gosh. Distracted by thinking about this concept and how to conjure. Oh my gosh. I'm writing this down. Okay. Thing. Okay, so, um, oh my gosh, I can't believe you just said you're gonna ride the sexy griffin. Okay, so, um, there we go. Done. Let's go with, uh, yeah, with an eight. You cl you point out what you think. You're not really sure if that's gonna be the best w uh, way to ascend the cliff. It is a sheer cliff. There is not much grades to it at all, and it's quite rocky. Um, Let's go for your. Uh, so you're not really much help at all, unfortunately, to your with your attempt. Great idea. Horrible dice. Go with Peleus and Vio, please. Could I get you guys to roll, roll for me? Um, athletics checks. That's a nice athletics check. Sixteen. Sixteen's pretty decent. Twenty is even better. So here, so. The t between the two of you guys, starts to scale this mountain, finding yourself some rock face areas, kind of m working your way up. And with Peleus's suggestion, um, kind of anchor in a, a rope at about a halfway point. Um, while you're anchoring in the rope, um, Vio, do you have a rope in your kit as well? Let me check. Inventory. 50 feet is so Yes. Yeah, okay, I have good, good. So you continue to scale the the cliff, and it's taking like it's hard work, but you are able to uh, scale the cliff the entire way. By the time um, Peleus is confident with his fifty foot rope being anchored about the halfway point, and you get all the way to the top, um, where you do see tamped down grass on either side of the water, and obviously water has been splashed everywhere here. You do also see the carcass of a horse not too far away, um, half eaten. And so then we get, so you are able to anchor your rope up there as well and drop it down the side. And so just as you're finishing um, anchoring your rope in, because it takes a lot of time to do that while you're holding on to a mountain, Peleus, the um, Vio's rope drops down as well. <laughs> and so you're able to now grab onto Vio's rope and start climbing it up. Meanwhile, Juniper, roll me an athletics check, please. Oh god. I'm gonna say with advantage because it's a rope that you're using. And so that's good. Yay! So it's a sixteen. Sixteen. 
Yeah, so with a 16, you are able to use it and basically uh, belay yourself all the way back up to the top of the mountain using switching ropes partway through. Um, roll me a wisdom check. Me. Who will? Uh, yes, Juniper. Okay. Uh, 13. Yeah. It's good enough for you to remember that maybe you should grab Paleus's rope along the way, and so you grab his rope and keep and kind of wrap it around your foot so that while you keep going up, you're dangling this rope behind you to bring yourself all the way back up, and you can give Paleus's rope back to you. Cool. I'll give it back. But now that you're up here, you all see the exact same scene. Uh, uh, these uh, this half-eaten horse carcass to one side. Uh, this river that's just raging to go over top the side, there's the side of the cliff, and, but obviously a lot of the water has been um, splashed up and out. Um, looks like it might have been a very fun game the Griffin's playing, but that's about it. Um, can I ask how old is the is the carcass? Is 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 I'm sorry, how old is the car oh carcass? Uh, it yeah, go ahead and roll for me a nature check. Nature. Getting as many oh, no. of rolls in as I can, give yeah, as many opportunities as it were. <sighs> yeah, it's kind of tough to tell. It's been only half eaten, and the flies are starting to gather. So as a result of the flies starting to gather, it's kind of tough to tell if it's like a fresh kill or if it's a couple days old kill. Um, well, only one way to find out. Video cuts up cuts out a part of the flesh or meat okay. and torches uh, torches it kind of grilling it and trying to cook it and eat it all right so eating a horse um with your nature check of a three um it smells absolutely horrible paleus you notice this fairly quickly um with your passive wisdom I'm going to say that you would notice particularly quickly that um, that's not really meat that Vio cut out. That might have been the stomach. And you don't want to cook that. That's like, ugh. It's super acidic. It's not going to be all that ple uh, pleasant. And it just stinks when he puts the fire to it. Yeah. I can recommend you not eat that. It doesn't look right to me. It's rancid. Oh, but I'm hungry. You sink your teeth into it, and it immediately uh, uh, releases this powerful, um, acetic, chunky kind of um, decayed smell to it. I'm going to get you to roll me a con save. You're going to poison yourself with this. Uh, no, nah, you've you've eaten far worse. You've eaten far worse. Um, so you do not provide yourself with food poisoning, but you don't take too many bites of it because even then, you, 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 it would be a thing. <laughs> what what chewing? I look at Pelias and say, "It's tough and old. Want some?" <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll pass, sir. Uh... All right. Now, the river that comes up to this cliff is around um, 30 feet wide, but deep. Cuts deep into the mountainside here. So what is it you guys are going to do to cross this place? Um... Well, my sexy griffin lasts for an hour. Should we? Did you actually cast it? Cast? I don't know if you actually casted it yet. Not yet, but okay. I'm asking the party if I should now. Well, if you're going to call a very sexy griffin, maybe we should point it towards where the other griffin is. Can I request, what spell is it you're talking about, Juniper? <laughs> That's probably a good clarification. Uh, summon Beast. Okay. It's a second level spell. 
Okay, hang on. I gotta. I'm gonna look up some things here with it. Uh, let's see here. Summon beast. Uh, beast heal the corp. It's the corporeal form. Uses the beast. Uh, beast still spirit stat block. Okay. And it can be an air creature okay. as long as it's. 20 hit Interesting. Oh crap, Interesting. it's small! I did not see that. <laughs> Never mind. Yes. I mean, it could still be a sexy griffin, but it's going to be a sexy like, 8 inch griffin. Uh... 8 inch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm 12. <laughs> I know. I, just, I know. I know all too well. <laughs> okay, well, we will not be able to ride it across. I got excited. <laughs> Wow. How how wide is the river again? Thirty feet. I look at Paleus. Do you wanna try flying over the river? No, I don't want to try flying over the river. Come on, it's fun. <laughs> I can only imagine what that entails. <laughs> <laughs> One day. So how are you guys gonna? What are you guys gonna do then to get across and get going? The, does it have a strong current? Is it visible? Visibly? Uh, it's a pretty strong, strong current. current. Yeah, it's definitely launching itself quite well over the edge of the cliff. Is there any sign of any crossing point further within? Uh, not shot. from here. You'd have to probably go further upstream to see if you can find something. But here it's pretty deep and looks like it would be pretty difficult to fjord. And if you were to just simply try to walk through it and lose your footing, you're going to go back over the edge of that cliff. Well, we can try tying you up while you cross that, Paleus. <laughs> Actually, um, I could go first. I can change into an octopus. Ooh, takoyaki. I'm hungry. Oh, God. <laughs> he says with half of, half of a horse's stomach hanging off of its hand. His, there. She says after with the half of a horse's stomach hanging out of her hands, of course. Do you find the flies improve the horse, the dead horse flesh? I kicked it. Mind you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, is that what you're going to do? Is you, are you going to transform into an octopus? Um, I think so. That seems well, to... It's a fresh water river. Still, you will have to brave against the current. Oh, sorry. That was out of character. That is, that is still true, though, all the same. And I think even Juniper would recognize that. Yeah. What I are you guys going to do? large beast. I heard that over top of everything. All I hear in the background, I am a large beast. Sorry. It sounds like the world's the best <laughs> self-talk ever. I am a large beast. I am a large beast. I am a large beast. Is, okay, anyway. Um, I talked to myself okay. and forgot the microphone was in front. <laughs> I was going to save this uh, for later, but... I do have Misty Step. If it's 30 feet away, I can just teleport. Yeah, you totally can. And you have rope with you. How are you going yep. to... So you're going to uh, basically throw rope one side. I would say if you Misty Step, I would say you are able to uh, comfortably get your party across that river. I won't do rolls for it. I'll just say that was a good idea and just get her done. Yeah, I'll just do All that. Right. So you guys watch as Bo just kind of goes to the edge of the river and just pff, mists out and ends uh, appears on the other side of the river, uh, tosses a rope back over to you guys, and you guys are now able to be pulled across with the strength that Vio has, uh, one at a time to the other side of the river, and you guys can now just start making your way to try to track down these griffins, um, following the edge of the cliff face. So I'm going to say that uh. that's what happens. If you're good with that. Yeah. And well, then... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, as I missed this step, 
Vio was thinking to herself that, but I really wanted to throw him across the river. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> they, the two, the three of you start making your way alongside the cliff face. Um, and before long, I'm going to say around uh, 40 minutes of just trying to track where these griffins may have gone. They can go pretty fast when they're in the air. That being said, she was also carrying two of her juveniles with her. Um, but you guys can walk alongside the edge of the cliff. And what you do see after a little bit um, is the cliff suddenly has this jut inland. Or in, in a jut inward a bit. So that... Uh, and we kind of look over the edge of it, and it looks like it's just most recently fallen away. You can see over the edge of the cliff rubble all over the ground. And roll for me. Anybody who has proficiency with perception, please go ahead and roll perception for me. Look, look at the right screen. That was uh, Dax uh, rolled a 13. There's an at 20. Oh. Hot dang. Gotta love it. And... Uh, hang on. Oh, and Carney's in! Hang on. Let's get Carney in now that I know that Carney is here. Get this going. Uh, which You are this person, right? I gotta get the right clicker on here. Uh, yeah. all, that's all good. Uck is here, so I'm going to wreck on this and say Uck was basically playing catch up and ran to catch catch up to you guys, um, and so now fo following in line with you uh, is now with you for the last couple of moments of our session. Uh, this is but Vio's nat twenty on that, amaze balls. Uh, you uh, are looking over the edge of the cliff, and what you see are um, there's um, amongst the rubble, um, poking out in certain spots. You can look at something that seems more elongated and white. Um, and then you also see um, twigs and brush in that. And you kind of start to put things two and two together like... That ha might have been the makings of a large nest at one point in time. And so you start looking around to see if you can clock where the griffins are. And you don't see anything, but you hear a little bit of commotion, kind of undefined, in the trees off to your right, further inland from the cliff. Get my crossbow ready. I'm gonna. Can I? Um, I'm gonna use this power. I forgot to use it last time. This power. Which power? Vigilant Blessing on myself. Okay, what does that do? It's as an... As an action, I'm going to give myself oh, okay. an advantage on my next initiative roll I make. Okay, yeah. You can certainly do that. Alright, so... Vio, you're the only one who's kind of heard this commotion in the trees. Are you going to do anything with it? So, oh, uh, I'm going to tell um, everyone that I'm hearing something, and then, um, do I know which direction, DM? It seems to be mostly just in more further in from the cliff, uh, into the forest, into the magical forest. Well... Do you would like to ask the party if they are willing to enter Fang? Oh no, not Fangorn Forest. What the hell? To enter the <laughs> magic forest? <laughs> well, what do you say? Yeah. Are you guys ready to go in? And Uck is shaking their head. Oh come on, Uck! You need some action. You're not that tired. <laughs> I, 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 I'm an old man. I'm always tired. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Um. Are you? I think the rest of the party is walking into the trees with Vio's lead. Are you following, Uck? Yeah. Yeah. I'm following yeah. 
All right, okay, good to get. So, leading into the trees, um, quietly or just kind of walking? What are you guys wanting to do? I'm trying I to would like to say too much pain, my own. <laughs> quietly, it's possible. All right, stealth me a check. Bill would like please. to be st- would like to try stealth with with her very high dexterity. <laughs> Twenty-four. Ooh. This might Six. Be an watch Paleus break. Uh, yeah, watch Paleus do this. So, Juniper is used to working, uh, walking through forests and trees. Um, being the druidic nature she has, she's able to kind of deftly make her way through the brush that that is in here. The leaves of these trees are uh, a variety of colors: greens, pinks, blues. Uh, and very vibrantly so too, almost as if somebody had taken um, the most neon color lights possible and put them into chlorophyll instead. Um, but so it is a very colorful forest that you are walking into, uh, and the light as it shines through the leaves kind of add, provide this kaleidoscope feel as it hits the ground. The you wa- walking in. Um, every once in a while, um, Juniper, you turn around as the or, or kind of usher a shh to Vio ahead as Vio steps on a twig and just crack or um, uh, Peleus um, walks actually into a tree shouldering and just and you can actually hear the impact uh, or something along those lines. Uck's not all that bad um, but Uck is also a little bit slower to do it. Um, So but the four of you guys are able to kind of get in there um Roll for me. I'm going to say because it was Juniper that was the quietest. Roll for me a quick perception check, please. Okay. Um, I suppose my arthritis will give me away as well quite heavily. Just creak, 17. creak, creak of the joints. Yeah. <laughs> Using my belay seven... to smash things down as I plow through whatever underbrush. There you go. Almost looking for it to cut to, to beat up. So... With a seventeen, Juniper, um, you come out to you come upon this uh, small opening in the trees, and can tell that there has been some things moved around, some twigs and brush and, and branches um, moved around relatively quickly, and you can actually see a bit of a mound set up um, of these twigs and muck and brush um, up against a fairly large tr- uh, tree trunk. I'm going to say it's probably around four feet wide tree trunk. Um, and in between some of the twigs, you see two big yellow eyes just kind of watching you. Happy eyes? Your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, does V recognize those eyes? Uh, v will recognize those yeah, eyes definitely because these are the same eyes you blinded with your love light. <laughs> oh god. Alright, is it sex oh. Griffin time? <laughs> You're a large beast. You're a large beast. <laughs> I'm a large beast. Not the spell, but I'm a large piece. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is such a bad idea. Um, I'm gonna summon... And I get the sense that these are probably the smaller griffiths, so I'm gonna summon um, a sexy griffith. Gri- uh, a griffin? A sexy griffin? Like Griffin, a, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was a, thinking Andy. a tiny sexy Okay, so here's the deal. When you're summon, summoning a beast, you're actually summoning an actual beast. So mm-hmm. it's not like you can summon a griffin that is only eight inches tall because not, such a thing doesn't actually exist. But you could potentially su- uh, summon a griffin chick. Yes. All right. It is a sexy griffin chick. Mm-hmm. Vio will help her by offering some rations to the sexy griffin chick. Uh, 
<laughs> We're this just going to act like super friendly towards the sexy creature. How many, can you ca how many times can you cast that a day and does the, does the creature disappear? Well, it's three times a day, isn't it? Or twice a day? It lasts for an hour. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, this one lasts for an hour. This is a spell. It's not really a feature, so um, no. it's however many spell slots you got, so... Uh, in this case, so you create this, and are you where are you conjuring it? Are you going to conjure it in your hand because it can fit in your hand, or are you going to conjure it in? Well, actually, it wouldn't be fitting in your hand. It would fitting it fit in your brace. It's small. I, I say eight inches. Yeah. That's not true. That's more tiny. It's going to be a little bit bigger than that. It's going to be about like a five pound griffin. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, five like pound griffin chick. <laughs> Sexy um... griffin chick. <laughs> <laughs> It is sexy. Um, I want to summon it kind of in front of the other griffins. And I want it to be as alluring as possible. Okay. Like, it's kind of strutting around. And... It's this little itty-bitty baby griffin mm -hmm. um, that is now just kind of bursts up and uh, kind of appears and just and just like What? Which which kind of beast is it? Is it land, sea, air? It is an air beast. Air. In air. Oh. Um, and so it's got its wings. Um, you immediately see the eyes draw back in the the twig and muck thing hut that has been created, and then silence just looks back at you. Like, And the griffin's head, you see, peer from behind the twigs. Just and it's it's almost as big as the twigs, as, as the twig mound that's there. This whole this whole creature just kind of lifts his head up and over the twigs, and very much keeping its eyes on you, kind of steps around, sniffs the little baby griffin. And picks it up with his beak. I'm gonna slightly bow. Persuasion check. Okay. Do I have Let's any do advantage it. from? Post. I know, <laughs> especially this one. Do I have any no, you advantage have... from the sexy griffin? You beat the crap out of the big mama griffin earlier on. No, you don't have advantage. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I would try. <laughs> Two! <laughs> yeah, okay. So this with is going that, so great. Just, you see, she watches as you bow, and she just kind of pulls the chick back in to the hut, to this twig hut, and disappears in there. Eyes appearing again between the twigs, back inside again. Just watching you. Well, that's gonna work. <laughs> the griffin idea was good, just... Was it? Uh, DM. Yeah. W wait. Uh, I'm gonna check something. Okay. What are you guys gonna do? You've got a baby griffin in this. One thing I will mention, it obviously does not look like this is an actual den or a home that the griffin would normally keep. It looks like it was ra ra uh, randomly slapped together very quickly. Okay. Uh, I would like to try something. Okay. Uh, I would also like to use my spell, uh, the Speak with Animals. All right. And then I'm going to speak in Sylvan and huh? try to talk to the Griffin and say that, don't be afraid. We're friends. We care for you. Do not mind the pale one. He's too far. He's old. We're friends. <laughs> And you're going to hear a little bit of a squawk. Everybody else is going to hear a little bit of a squawk back. 
but you're gonna understand this, um, Vio to say, you hurt. No, no, no. I heal. I bring your rations, and I take some rations from my bag oh. and offer it to it. Okay. So then, with that, I'm gonna get you to. Uh, are you gonna place the rations in any particular location? Just in front of the, uh, close enough to the griffin, and then I step five steps backwards to show him that I do not mean any harm. I'm sorry, DM, I cannot hear you. Oh yeah, you get to roll with the disadvantage on this persuasion check this time, because um, you guys haven't been doing so great, and it's definitely leery of you. But go ahead and roll a persuasion check. I'll try. <laughs> oh, oh, that was a good that's roll. A great roll. Two great rolls. You and you needed it, and she she kind of sniffs it out. She leaves it alone for a bit. And the sun is starting to set. And so that is actually where we're going to pause today's session. Right there. On that really nice persuasion roll. Oh, it works. As the sun is setting. No, we haven't you haven't seen it work out yet or how it's working out, but you're going to see that next week. So that's where we're gonna go next week. See how things go. Remember, I've got a backup plan. Uh, the, yeah, of course, it's your uh, spiritual <laughs> weapon. Um, the it is crude, it kind of that? is. All right, so we're gonna throw some quick announcements out here too. Sorry, go ahead, uh, real quick, uh, Vio. What were you gonna say? I'm sorry, Dak. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, Paris, for throwing you a while ago, but I will do it again if you use that spiritual weapon. Ah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Shouts out for our stream here, first of all, foremost, let's talk a little bit about what's going on. So tomorrow we're going to be playing the All of On Chronicles. It starts at 1 p.m. UTC, where the party meets a dragon. And then we have Adventures of Alain at 7.30 UTC tomorrow. That's happening uh, with uh, something about teaching necromancy. Don't know really the deal. Going to find out on tomorrow, though. Um, then we also have ourselves the... Uh, the, back to the Witchlight campaign on Tuesday. Zelda comes back up on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central. And last but not least, we're back here at 1 p.m. UTC, uh, rolling for wishes. Uh, this is a fundraiser, so if you guys are so inclined, thank you so much for joining us. And now I'm going to encourage you to consider donating to the Make-A-Wish International and see if we can... Uh, this, this whole campaign, Nocturn, as you can see kind of behind me here, Nocturne is actually a, a module created for Dungeons and Dragons by Make a Wish, and that is what we are playing right now. It's a session, is a module called To Be a Beast Keeper, uh, and that's what we're going to carry on. And it's uh, yeah, that pretty much covers it for today. Let's pick somebody to raid. I've got Phoenix up right now, uh, playing some Dungeons and Dragons, and so is Corsair's Cove. So, um, where do we want to send all of our viewers to? Where do we want to go? Let's see here. We can go for a quick roll, or somebody can guide it from the uh, from the uh, from the Twitch chat. If you guys wanted to do that, you can redeem something to guide where you want it to be. Otherwise, I'm rolling uh, a d20 to decide where we're going, um, and that tells me that we're going to be going to Corsair's Cove. So, with that, guys, we are now raiding Corsair's Cove. And we will see you guys tomorrow with the Olivon Chronicles. Thank you guys very much for joining. We'll see you next week, too. Thanks, everybody. Bye.